What's up guys, Ryan B here. This is Ride Tech Gaming, and in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to make your very own Stinger transitions using Adobe After Effects that looks just like this. Now, if you don't have access to Adobe After Effects, if you watch this video all the way through to the end, I will show you exactly where to go to download this Stinger transition with or without the logo that we're gonna to add towards the end of the video. Don't forget to hit a like on this video. It goes a long way to spread these out across YouTube and really helps the channel grow. Think about subscribing to the channel if you haven't already, and you like content just like this. If you guys do still have questions towards the end of the video or you want to talk anything about streaming, tech, gear, any of that, I do stream myself every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Link in the description down below. Now with that all out of the way, let's go ahead and jump right into the video. So if this is your first time inside After Effects completely, there's a whole lot going on within this program. So definitely take your time, hover over everything inside here, kind of get a feel for what everything says and does there's a whole lot and we're going to be running through this quite fast and kind of only focusing on the things that we're going to be using to create this transition so the first thing we want to do when we get in here is click new composition you can rename yours whatever you want i'm going to name mine blue circles next step you can change the resolution here 1920 by 1080 is fine that's what we're going to use frame rate as 60 frames per second is great now the time code we want the start time code at zero seconds because we want to start at zero and the duration we're going to want four seconds for this one and you now normally for transitions you're looking at anywhere from three to six seconds you can do longer or shorter depending on the kind of feel and transition you want to make but what i've noticed is three to six seconds is usually the sweet spot this one though we are going to do four seconds now as i mentioned there is a whole lot going on inside this program there's a lot to look at so this first main box here is going to be basically our preview window which we're going to see exactly what we're making one of the there's a lot of little tool tips down here with one of the most important ones being this little checkered flag looking one which toggles transparency grid you can see i don't have this activated it's just a black background if i do have this activated you can see this checkerboard which tells you that it's an invisible background which is what we're going to want for a transition next up you have all these little tool tips on the side here which cover a lot of different things you can get in here change fonts paragraph settings trackers i'm going to click on a line because that's the one we're going to be using more often in this but again click through here kind of get familiar with all the things you can do with this there's even a search function that you can go through and find specific things now up here in these tool tips you've got a bunch of different creation things you can click on there's a selection tool a hand tool zooms a box tool pen tool a whole bunch of different things next up here is the composition and project window which you can see how many compositions you have the project that you're working on and then behind my whole face which i'm actually going to move myself out of the way real quick i'm going to put us right up here so down here in this section, you have the layers stack section where you're going to have everything stacked on top of each other in layers similar to like Photoshop. And then the timeline on this side, which is one of the more important parts to pay attention to when you're trying to create any sort of animations. This timeline goes from zero to four seconds because that was what we created in there. So in the middle here would be at two seconds. So just so you're aware, this is going to be one of the more important sections to pay attention to. For the purpose of this video, though, I'm going to go ahead and remove my background off this turn my lights off. So it's a little bit easier to see that way you guys can see me here and i don't have a bunch of things going on in the background so before we begin making the actual transition i'm just going to quick rundown up show you guys how to animate something so we're going to go up here to this toolbar go to this box selection tool you can click and hold it to switch through different shapes right now i'm going to go through circle or ellipse go into this section here click and drag and make it exactly what size i want if you hold shift you can make it even on both the x and y values so it's not stretched but that's good you can go up here and change the color i'm going to make this one red selection tool put it about there right there in the center go down here into the shape layer click the transform section click this little arrow to drag it down and you have all these things you can change you can change the anchor point which is this little anchor point here the position of where it's sitting on the actual screen left right up and down the scale so how big or small it is rotation and then the opacity of how much is visible if you want to animate any of those make sure you're at the zero or wherever you want the animation to start Click the little stopwatch for me i'm going to switch to position click the stopwatch and it creates a keyframe this keyframe will be here at zero and that's the position that it's going to be at at the zero second mark so at one second i want it to be completely off screen so i'm just going to drag this over and it'll automatically create that keyframe and everything in between so if we go back to zero press space on our keyboard you see that it just drags it right off the screen of course, you can add a bunch of different things all at the same time at different keyframes so at, let's say at 30 seconds you want the scale to start and at one second you want it to be much smaller back and then from there it kind of just zooms off the screen that's kind of a quick rundown of how you do it i'm gonna go ahead and delete this and then we're gonna get started with the actual transition so to get started with the actual transition that we're going to make we're gonna go back up here to the circle we're gonna zoom out a little bit to make sure we can see the entire preview window and we want this thing to cover the entire thing hold shift to make it even on both sides We'll align horizontally and align vertically. If you don't have this, just make sure you go to the align section, 
open it up. That's good. It's covered on all sides. Next thing you're going to want to do to get that little encapsulating circle effect, go back up to the shapes, go over where it says create shape or create mask. And we want to create a mask on top of this shape. We want it to be almost the exact same size. We'll go there to one corner, hold shift again to keep it even and then drag it out to where pretty equal on all sides, line it up again, zoom in, just kind of double check that it's pretty equal on all sides and it looks pretty good right there. The next up we want to go into this layer stack. We want to click the inverted section because we want to start at nothing. Open up the mask, go down into mask expansion. And if we drag this into the negative numbers, we can see that it starts to create that encircling effect. Let's go ahead and drop this back to zero. Now to keep it animated, make sure our timeline's also at zero and click that stopwatch to create that first keyframe. And the next keyframe will probably be about 115. And we'll just drag this down until it fully encompasses that circle right about there. Drop it back to one. A spacebar on your keyboard to see what it looks like. As you can see, the animation looks good, but it's very static. It just goes from one line to another. You can kind of see it too if we click the graph editor. You can see how it's just kind of a flat line go straight across. Go ahead and click out of that again. Just click graph editor. Now, in order to make this a little more fluid of an animation for any animation, you can highlight both your keyframes and then press F9 on your keyboard, which turns these into easy ease. So if we go back to the graph editor, you can see instead of a straight line like it was before, it's now this little loop and it takes some time to get to the middle point and then it takes a little bit shorter over time to get to that point however for this one i want the bigger circles to kind of be slow so i want it to start very slow at first and then go faster once it gets smaller i think we can go a little bit less than that probably about there back to zero press space on the keyboard and i like the way that looks go ahead and click the graph editor again so we'll go back to this press space and that's how that first encompassing circle looks for this though, I'm gonna change the color to black. I always set it to a blue color because I think I'm gonna go blue for this. Go ahead and click this arrow here to kind of collapse everything down so it doesn't look all cluttered. And there you go, that's that first black circle. For this one, I'm gonna click right click it, click rename. I'm gonna call this one black circle. Go ahead and click black circle, press control C and control V to copy and paste it. And I'm gonna rename this second one white circle. Again, you can name it whatever you want and color it whatever you want. I'm gonna change the color as well to white. I'm gonna open up white circle, go down into masks, go open up mask one and click down into mask expansion where we can see these keyframes here. And you can see the only one that we're seeing right now is the white one since it's on top. If we take both of these keyframes and slide it out, we'll start to see the black. For this one, I kind of want the white to follow a little later after the black. We get black and we get the white. That's good. Okay, so we have the black, we have the white, Flaps this one down. We'll create one more. So we'll hold on white circle, press control C, control V again rename this one to blue or again whatever color you want this last one will be the blue circle i'll open it up go into masks mask one go to mask expansion i want to change the color again so this one's going to be that's okay bring it in for this one i want it to be shortly after the white i want it to go a little bit further than that so let's go what if we end it perfectly on two seconds go back to zero on the timeline press space Okay, I like that. That looks very good. And that looks good for at least the entrance animation and we're gonna have to do the exact same, but to exit, so we'll expand the circles back out. But before I do that, I wanna add in a little bit of flair to this. So I'm gonna add in a logo of mine. If you have a logo, just go ahead and add your logo in the same way that I'm going to do it. And then you can animate it the exact same way. So that way you can follow along. For those of you that do not have a logo, what you can do instead is go up here to this tool section, click on the T which gives you a typing tool. So you can just click anywhere on the screen. You can type in whatever your logo is or your name. You can adjust the size and you can follow along. So instead of a logo, you're gonna use the text tool, which will work just the same. Again, if you have a logo, it's gonna look a little bit better. I mean, I'm gonna drag in my logo right here. Just drag it right in. Zoom out a little bit because my logo starts way too big. Go to the selection tool, bring it, scale it down a little bit. So I want it to probably Start like that, but I also want it to be off the screen for now until I find a good spot for it to come in. A good spot might be almost exactly where it starts to be. Probably about there's where I want it to start to come in. So we'll expand this down go to transform, position that first keyframe there. And then by the time we get to probably about there, I want this to come down to about there. Go ahead and bring this back, see how fast that is. 
it's a little too fast i think so i'm gonna pull this one down and that looks better but i also want it to get bigger as it comes in so we'll start exactly where this one starts but a scale as well bring that right in there and i want it to get to about there see what that looks like that's good but again we're gonna highlight all of these press f9 on the keyboard to give it that easy ease again to make the animation look a little bit better and it comes in pretty fast you can go back to the graph editor for those as well kind of see what it looks like this one i wanted to actually start off faster and then come in slower let's see how that looks i think i want to expand the entire thing i think it comes in too quick let's go back out of the graph editor pull these slightly back a little bit more See what that looks like now we want this to stay kind of exactly what it is till probably about an even number here so i'll highlight these press Control c Control v so from here to here it's the exact same and then i want it to come out again so i'll press Control c on these back ones and they're about pulling apart so probably about there press Control v we'll see what that looks like now the next thing we need to do is open all these circles we're going to go ahead and close off the logo so we want this circle to start opening right as this one starts to go back this one about there i'll highlight this one here press Control c Control v that way it keeps it there and then by the time we get to about here i want it to be open so i'll Control c this one paste it over here see what that looks like Closes in and it starts to come back out. So that's the first one. Go ahead and close blue circle. We'll open white. Go down here into the expansion. You start to see this one. And then I want this one to start opening about here. So I'll control see this one, paste it there. Grab this last one, control C, copy it. See what that looks like so far. We still have to do the black one last. Okay, so we'll collapse on white, open up black, go into the mask path. This one closes, this one opens, that one opens, and then I want black to start opening about there. Control C, Control V it right there. We'll see this last one. I want it to be open about there. Alrighty, so let's see what the whole animation looks like now. All right, guys, so that right there is your Stinger transition. Now, I did promise you if you made it to the end of the video, I would show you exactly where to go to download this Stinger transition. If you go to the description down below under the video, there's a link to the Discord channel. And in the Discord channel, there's a free stuff section. So we have a bunch of different animations. We have a bunch of different Stinger transitions, including the one we made here and a bunch of others. So definitely go hop in there and check that out. Now, of course, if you found this video helpful, make sure you hit a like on the video. It goes a long way to spread these out across YouTube. Think about subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And feel free to check out any of my live streams as I do stream every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Link in the description down below for that. Of course, we've got some relevant content all right here.